Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our um, uh, whole training sessions. Um, uh, my name is Vladimir Kindratenko. Uh, uh, I am a co-leading center for AI innovation at NCSA. This is the center that is responsible for putting uh, uh, together this uh, set of uh, tutorials. Uh, we are going to have a series of these presentations over this semester to help you get started with the um, uh, using whole system and as well with some tools and to, to, to techniques and uh, uh, methodologies on uh, uh, developing and training machine learning models early on our, uh, particularly on our uh, on our system and uh, so with that uh, today is our first presentation which is dedicated to using whole system to get an account on whole and getting started with using, using whole and so with that, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Dewey Mu. Uh, Dr. Mu is um, a systems engineer responsible for running the system and also applying uh, uh, updates and uh, uh, making sure that the system is, is up to date with the uh, latest software stack and also developing new tools and methods for, uh, to, for running on whole as well as providing support for users. And so he will um, uh, present a tutorial on how to begin using whole system. So while he is presenting this tutorial, if you have um, uh, questions or issues with access to the system, uh, feel free to post them in the chat and uh, I will be able to reply to those as, as uh, Dr. Mu is presenting. All right, um, anyway. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the first of our uh, training session. Uh, today, I will introduce uh, how to use our house system to uh, uh, help with your machine learning uh, research projects. So let's start. Uh, all right, so uh, first house system overview. Uh, our house system is a NSF-funded IBM cluster for deep learning applications. This system uh, has 16 compute nodes with 2,560 uh, 2, CPU cores, along with 64 NVIDIA GPUs. We also have uh, 224 terabytes of all flash storage the origin, uh, the origin of the name of the cluster hell is based on a uh, all-time classic uh, sci-fi movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. In this movie, there is a system called HAL 9000, which is the uh, early concept of an intelli uh, artificial intelligence system get uh, uh, self-awareness and uh, end up uh, killing almost all the people. All right, so second part is introduce uh, uh, hardware. Uh, we have uh, one uh, IBM uh, 9006 uh, LC921 login node. On this node, we have a two 16 core IBM Power9 CPU run at 2.2 gigahertz, along with 256 gigabytes DDR4 memory. This is our uh, main entrance of this cluster. Uh, uh, just to be, uh, yeah, just need to know that uh, this machine doesn't have any GPU on it. And uh, so uh, this doesn't have, uh, doesn't have enough uh, computational power. I would like to uh, warn our users, do not run anything heavy or a computational job uh, on this node. Again, we have uh, 16 uh, IBM AC922 uh, a server which has 220 core IBM Power9 CPU uh, along with four NVIDIA V100 GPUs. I mean, uh, this GPU might be uh, had uh, some age, uh, 
but it's still the second best the GPUs that we can get from this market at this moment. So uh, it's still uh, very capable for of machine learning research uh, uh, tasks. And then I cannot stress enough is uh, the two DDN uh, GS400 NVE flash array. This uh, storage system provides us 224 terabytes of usable storage. We're running the Spectrum scale file system, aka the GPFS uh, on this system, uh, which provides very high performance uh, of, uh, uh, of the I.O. workload. So this is, this, uh, is a of key fe uh, features for this system, can, which can achieve very high performance. All right, uh, this is a, a, com a computing node uh, a, a, a architecture map. As we can see that we have two sockets per compute node, each socket will directly connect it to two NVIDIA v V100 GPU. And then between these two sockets, uh, there is a X bus uh, to communicate between the two CPUs. In, uh, in this way, uh, even one socket uh, CPU can uh, control all four GPUs on this node, uh, but uh, since the uh, X bus will not have uh, the, the, the same bandwidth like our uh, NVLink 2 has. So it will be, uh, it will be uh, optimal to acquire CPU cores on both socket to control all four GPU on the system. Uh, this uh, feed, uh, for these tricks, uh, we will discuss later in our uh, presentation. All right, this is the uh, uh, cheap uh, architecture map for the IBM Power9 CPUs. Um, I highlighted the, uh, uh, the, the most uh, unique feature of this CPU. First is a very high thread, uh, hyper thread performance. Uh, each uh, CP physical, physical uh, CPU cores of IBM Power9 will can uh, have uh, four uh, hyper threads that run simultaneously. Uh, so, as a result, uh, we have a 220 cores, uh, physical cores on the same nodes. Uh, if we map to the OS, it will be 160 uh, logical CPU cores per node. Also need to mention that uh, this CPU support NVIDIA NVLink 2.0, which provide very high bandwidth uh, between CPU and the GPU and GPU to GPU communication. Uh, as for the I.O. system, uh, this uh, Power9 uh, support uh, the PCIe Gen 4 uh, protocol. I mean, for now, it might not be that new, but consider three years ago, this is definitely a very unique feature at that time. Uh, following is NVIDIA V100 GPU. Uh, as uh, we discuss, uh, as I mentioned before, this GPU is is the flagship GPU for the last generation. It has a peak uh, seven point eight teraflops for double precision, and the uh, peak performance of fifteen tera of, uh, tera uh, teraflops for single precision. Uh, the memory bandwidth is 900 gigabytes per second and uh, has a, co a configurable uh, 96 uh, KB share memory 
uh, per SM and uh, 128 uh, KB L1 catch per SM. Uh, this is still very, very capable uh, GPU, which is also the power horse of this system. Uh, that's pretty much about the hardware. Let's talk about the software part. Um, as, uh, as we are having this uh, training session, well, we are uh, ending, uh, under going some uh, sys, uh, operation system update. Uh, the system used to use CentOS 7 as the operation system, uh, but right now we want to uh, plan to upgrade it to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.4. Uh, inside uh, this, we will have a uh, higher newer kernel, uh, higher uh, GNU compiler version that uh, which uh, will be uh, make us more capable to install the latest uh, machine learning uh, related software such as um, the TensorFlow and the PyTorch. Okay, so uh, in this training section, uh, we only introduce uh, the new OS, how to use our uh, new OS system so that uh, the, the user won't be confused uh, with our previous uh, introduction material. So as for compilers, this system will have the GNU version 8.4.1. Uh, as CUDA version, we install the latest 11.4. We also provide uh, the NVIDIA HPC SDK compiler, which used to be the PGI compiler, which acquired by, by NVIDIA. Uh, as for the development tools, we uh, currently have OpenCE 1.2.0. Uh, this is uh, actually the uh, a open source uh, it's a software collection that uh, combine all the major uh, major machine learning frameworks like uh, TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, and uh, and so on. Uh, we recommend our users to use this environment if possible because this is. Uh, this is uh, sub, uh, will be long term supported with the latest update. The second one called a Power AI 1.7.0. It uh, this one uh, the official name is Washing Machine Learning Community Edition. Uh, this one uh, is actually the previous generation of OpenCE. The, uh, the difference is, is at this uh, phase, the old Power AI was supported by, AB, uh, by IBM directly. And uh, because IBM stopped supporting that, so the very last version uh, is this 1.7.0. Uh, it's very stable, but uh, if you want the latest version, it's no longer, uh, no longer updatable. Besides that, if uh, our user want to run some parallel uh, computational tasks, we have op uh, op open MPI version 4.1.1 and uh, for uh, uh, auto uh, configuration, we have CMake. As for the uh, container solution, we uh, have Singularity 3.8 installed for our uh, uh, users that's interesting in running their job in, in within the container. All right. <clears throat> now uh, let's talk about the uh, programming environment. Uh, we uh, we uh, management the environment uh, on our system uh, through M uh, LMOD. 
this is a Lua-based uh, module system for dynamically altering environments. The basic usage for this system, uh, including the command like uh, module avail, which uh, lists all the currently available modules, uh, module list to list all the current uh, loaded module uh, with a module purge, a user can uh, unload all the loaded modules uh, at the same time and uh, use module load and unload to uh, load a uh, single uh, package that uh, our user intend to load or unload. All right, so connection. Uh, as we uh, mentioned, uh, we have a six, uh, a nine, a zero, zero, six, uh, dash 12P as our major login node. Uh, since right now we have a two part of, a, we have a two system, one for our original CentOS 7, one for a new uh, Red Hat 8.4. Uh, we have, so we introduce a, uh, the uh, 9006-22P node as our uh, second login node. So if you want to log in to our original uh, system with CentOS 7, uh, you just simply type SSH space with along with your user ID at hell.ncsa.edinois.edu. If you want to go to the new part of the system, uh, you need to SSH your user, user ID at hell-login2.ncsa.edinois.edu. Uh, since this system uh, normally will shared by uh, many users at the same time, so we need a workload many manager to uh, uh, set up the queue that will allow all the users to have their fair share of the computational resources. Uh, in, uh, on our system, we choose to use the Slurm workload manager. Uh, the reason we're tr uh, choosing this uh, is that this Slurm is very uh, powerful. And most importantly, this one is uh, selected by many other uh, peer assist, uh, computational system uh, within the exceed, uh, exceed, uh, exceed, exceed uh, a project that uh, contains many peer uh, supercomputing system across US. So uh, if our user can uh, get used to this one, uh, they can basically using uh, this, this they, they will uh, know how to run their jobs on many other systems. So it will save our user some uh, learning, uh, some uh, learning time. Now let's introduce some uh, Slurm policy on how. Uh, because right now uh, the, the there's uh, depending on the, the the different period of time, the the system could be very busy or uh, very non busy uh, during the different time of the year. So while the the system uh, is uh, in the rushing hour, we have a policy that uh, one user can have a maximum five running jobs at the same time. And uh, these five jobs can uh, run on max, uh, maximum five active, uh, active nodes. And uh, in total, uh, one user can have a maximum 16 activate uh, GPUs at the same time. And uh, the longest uh, war, war time for uh, per, uh, per job 
is 24 hours. Uh, setting up this is try to make sure that we, uh, we can serve as, as many users as possible at the same time. But if our user has any difficulties to uh, run their job, like they need a longer, uh, a longer wall time for their job, or they need more GPUs uh, for, uh, if they have uh, the good reasons, they can always contact us. Uh, we can uh, make temporarily make some uh, uh, exceptions. Uh, for our users. All right, so uh, now uh, we, there's uh, two uh, uh, like uh, uh, very usable uh, software that we developed for our user on this system. First is that uh, original Slurm command could be com very complex. Uh, Let's see this one as an example. These three lines of uh, a Slurm command uh, is the functionality is that uh, the use the, this command will uh, request a full node of our compute nodes with, with 160 uh, CPU cores and along with the four GPUs with all the uh, CPU memories uh, and run for 24 hours. That we can see there's uh, m there has so many uh, arguments that need to be filled in and our you uh, and also uh, the combination of those arguments could make big differences. And uh, previously, our users who do not have a lot of uh, uh, HPC Slurm experience tend to uh, have some uh, input, uh, uh, some arguments, um, not, not at the optimal uh, configuration. So you, you could uh, uh, cause their job performance slow down or Sometimes they just waste a lot of uh, resources that could be used by other users. So to solve this problem, we uh, developed a small uh, tool called the Slurm Wrapper Suite. The rule of thumb is that uh, we try to minimize the require options from our users. And uh, second is this need to be consistent with the original uh, Slurm run script format. And then the, the last one is sub, uh, submit job to suitable partitions uh, based on the number of GPUs. So let's see the first one. Uh, the original Slurm uh, command, uh, if you try to uh, request a interactive section, you will, you will need to run S run. For our Slurm wrapper suite, we have SW run. So SW run uh, only has uh, four options and only one option is required. Uh, the required uh, option is the partition name, which is uh, actually the partition name is very bad than the GPU numbers. Uh, such as if you want to run the job that require one GPU, you just submit the job to GPU X1. GPU, uh, if you want two GPU, just GPU X2, uh, and so on. And uh, the second uh, option, the, the, uh, the first optional uh, uh, options is CPU per GPU. So, uh, the default value for this uh, argument is 16. That's because we uh, hardwire uh, our CPU memory uh, to each uh, logical CPU cores. So each CPU, logical CPU core, we have 1.2 gigabyte of memory. 
So uh, 16 uh, CPU cores will cover the 16 gigabytes of GPU memory. So uh, you will uh, have a better performance uh, for the CPU and GPU memory uh, 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 translation, uh, transportation, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, this, uh, the second optional uh, argument for uh, SW run is war time. So the default is four hours. The maximum amount is 24 hours. Uh, uh, for this uh, war time, we only uh, accept integer from one to 24. Um, so, uh, so if you run on the very, uh, um, like a minimal input, you can just, uh, run SW run dash P GPU X one. It will give you 16 CPUs, uh, 19.2 gigabyte of, uh, of, uh, CPU memory and the one NVIDIA one, uh, V100 GPU uh, and uh, for uh, four hours. So uh, let's see, uh, SW run uh, usage. Uh, the reason uh, we set up the default hours to four hours is that if you s submit a job less than four hours, you, no matter which uh, partition you choose, your job will be submit to a debug queue. The debug queue is uh, designed for uh, short-term run jobs or some debugging uh, case if the user wanna uh, run some develop, uh, do some development work uh, on the system. So. Uh, this debug queue will have higher priority compared to our uh, uh, normal uh, normal uh, partitions. So if you submit the job here, uh, it will run faster than other jobs. Uh, as for singularity, uh, uh, the user can run uh, dash s following with the singularity image so in this case, uh, uh, in, in our example, uh, the dash s power AI, which means the our slum wrapper suite will search the uh, container registry for the power AI dot SIF, the uh, singularity uh, image. And uh, our user can also uh, export this uh, environment settings to their own uh, path, so they can use their uh, the they can run their uh, they can run their job uh, they can uh, build their own image within their own uh, home directory, and then use it uh, with this uh, sw run command. As for the s batch command, uh, the user only need to uh, submit uh, run add one line within the slurm, uh, slurm, uh, slurm script that uh, is uh, hashtag s uh, batch uh, space dash dash singularity following by the uh, contain uh, the singularity image for, uh, image name. So. Uh, how could we make this simple? Uh, as uh, this command with three lines is the uh, original Slurm command that we I show you before. So with our Slurm wrapper suite, as we can see that uh, with SW run dash P GPU X4, which means I want 40, a uh, four GPU dash C uh, to uh, space 40, means for each GPU, I want 40 CPU cores. In the, it's a total of 160. And then dash T, uh, 24 means I want the job to run for 24 hours. So we uh, we shorten the original uh, Slurm command and uh, uh, calculate the optimal setting for our user uh, with this Slurm wrapper suite. 
So our user only need to uh, know how many GPU they want and how long the job they, they want to run. Uh, similar to uh, SW run, the SW batch is a wrapper for S batch, uh, which is used to submit a batch job with a batch, batch script. Uh, this SW batch only have seven options uh, with also uh, one required option, which is the partition name. Uh, there's a, a th uh, there's extra three uh, option is the job name, output file, and the error files. Uh, basically, the usage is, is very similar to SW run. As we can uh, see this, uh, the, the example dot uh, sb is a original Slurm uh, uh, batch script, and the following the example dot swb uh, on the bottom I highlight with the green color is the uh, uh, it's a easy uh, using a, uh, it's a uh, it's a sh uh, yeah it's a shortened version of the exactly same uh, like a fun of uh, script but with our uh, with our slurm wrapper suite as we can say uh, see that uh, we only need one liner that as a uh, hashtag as batch uh, dash dash partition equals to gpux1 and uh, the slurm wrapper suite will calculate all the uh, parameter arguments and the uh, variables above. And uh, so this two, uh, uh, for our users, so the user can save a lot of time for the input. And uh, uh, these two examples are equivalent. Uh, so that's how our Slim Wrapper Suite works. And uh, this Slim Wrapper Suite also has a very, uh, popular uh, tool called SWQ, uh, which is a wrapper for SQ. Uh, SQ. Uh, this SWQ will show the cluster usage within the terminal uh, uh, with a color-coded uh, the format to show the current utilization level of this cluster. Uh, as we can see, if you type the uh, uh, SWQ within the terminal, uh, the terminal will draw this table for you. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, 16 uh, compute nodes. Uh, the right, uh, the left hand side shows the utilization of CPU, as you can see from one to 160. And the right hand side shows the utilization level of GPU. So uh, as we can see, we have a uh, four nodes. Right now it's empty that no CPU or GPU uh, uh, workload uh, whatsoever. So in this case, if you submit the job, it will run, uh, submit the job that uh, required less than four nodes of uh, uh, computational resources, the job gonna run executed right away. And uh, let's say uh, if the how 06 to how 09, all four nodes are also occupied. And uh, we can see that there is a how 14 that has one CPU job that only use 64 CPUs. And uh, the GPUs are, uh, are uh, idling. So if you uh, can altering your code that you are using uh, only GPU job with a limited amount of CPU resources, your job will also uh, running uh, get executed right away. So with this, the user can see how many computational resources are currently left. So uh, they they could sub uh, if they can submit the job accordingly. Uh, we can improve. We can save the the user some time and also make uh, the make the system uh, running more efficiently. So these are some uh, frequently asked questions about Slurm Wrapper Suite. 
So first is uh, why the partition GPUX1 doesn't work with original uh, Slurm command as batch. The answer is the uh, GPUX1, GPUX2 works with only uh, with our Slurm wrapper suite. They are, let's say, they are like uh, logical partitions. They are not uh, physical partitions. They are not physical partitions that we set up with Slurm. So uh, the only valid partition you want to use with original uh, Slurm uh, command is GPU and CPU. So second is while I get a index error, the string index out of range error when I'm using SW batch. So uh, Slurm wrapper suite requires some packages like uh, the Python YAML uh, packages. So users should uh, submit your job uh, within the default environments we set up on the system. So if you are uh, using uh, currently using your own Conda, uh, Conda Python environment, um, which happen don't have the Python YAML and uh, other required packages, this could happen. And uh, why my job's always under queuing? Uh, the answer is uh, check your job status with SQ for detail reason. And also you can check your re uh, recent usage to verify your fair share. As we mentioned, we have a uh, fair share uh, factor set up on the system, which means if one user using a huge amount of uh, computational resources within uh, a short amount of time, uh, his a uh, fair share factor uh, gonna reduce to a very little uh, scale. So uh, one is compared to others, his job, he or she, uh, his or her job uh, gonna have a very low priority within the queue. So in this case, uh, we can make sure that every user can have their fair share uh, within a certain amount of time. All right, so uh, that's pretty much for the uh, uh, traditional use of our system. And uh, now uh, let's talk about something that uh, uh, will uh, make uh, our uh, uh, HPC system uh, more, uh, more easy to use to our new users. Uh, which is called uh, the open on demand. So we have implemented the open on demand on health system as a, a web based portal. Uh, this open on demand service, uh, including man manage the data with the files app, submit and uh, monitoring jobs, and uh, access, uh, access the cluster uh, with the uh, a uh, shell access app, and the user can utilize a uh, Jupyter Notebook, TensorBoard, and H2O AI. Uh, and there's a uh, interactive apps. So uh, let's uh, uh, get started. Uh, so uh, now uh, the, the open on demand portal is protected by our uh, dual uh, authentication uh, 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 apps. So, uh, so this is the uh, login uh, login page that you want to input your uh, username as well as your password uh, to log in, and then there is a uh, another uh, second page will ask you to enter a passcode or send a push. After you send a push uh, or enter the passcode, it will uh, bring you to the official uh, homepage of our uh, How On Demand uh, the dashboard. As we can see, uh, 
the main functionality is on top on the top of the menu, which is files, jobs, clusters, and the interactive apps. So let's uh, talk about it one by one. First is if you click the files app, it will bring you to your home directory right away. And uh, this, uh, as you can see here, uh, this is a uh, resource uh, manager uh, styled a web page that allow you to uh, access your uh, all your files uh, with, that you can create a new file, new directory, uh, upload and download the data as you wish, and uh, copy and move, even delete the data. Uh, just remember, uh, we already set up the permission limitation. So one user can only uh, access their own path. Though, so they, they cannot uh, access uh, other, like if you click home, you will see all the, all the others uh, username, but you, you click it, uh, you, you're, not, you're not gonna able to see the, the contents of others, uh, other users home directory. So uh, second, if we click the jobs, we will see uh, two options. One is the, the job monitor, and uh, the second is the uh, job composer. So let's see this job monitor first. Uh, the job monitor uh, will show all the running and queuing jobs and uh, recent complete jobs within the web uh, within the page. Uh, as we can see uh, on the uh, top uh, right hand side, there is two options uh, allow you to choose. You want to see only your job or all the jobs running on the system. And you can also choose all the clusters within this how on demand, where you only want to see uh, a very specific uh, the syst, uh, jobs, job queue for a specific system. So uh, as we can see, for, for all the jobs, if I check the how dash right head eight, which our new partition, we can see that uh, there is only one job is currently running. But if we check all the jobs from our original uh, CentOS based the how cluster, we can see there's a lot of a job are currently running there. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, we can see here has a little arrow shaped uh, button. If we click this one, it, uh, it will expand the, the inform detailed information for this job, like, uh, uh, how long this job been running, when this job been submitted, and uh, what is the expected uh, uh, the end of this job. And uh, yes, the, those detailed informations that uh, our user can check to get better understanding of their own job or uh, what will be the future status of the computational queue. And the job composer, uh, this job composer allow users to create uh, to create their own job, submit the job, sus uh, cancel the job, and delete the job. So uh, we have prepared uh, a very simple example for our users uh, to uh, get a better understanding how to run the job with Job Composer, which I will show you in our uh, following hands-on section. So let's skip this, uh, this part. And then uh, for the, uh, if we click uh, the uh, clusters uh, uh, menu, uh, we're gonna see right now we have uh, two uh, shell access, one go to uh, our Red Hat A partition, one go to our CentOS 7 partition. Each one will allow you to uh, access the cluster with a shell. 
uh, this shell section will be hosted on uh, on our uh, on our system, which means that our user only need a functional web browser to use the fun this functionality. They do not need to install a uh, terminal or apps just for this SSH session. Uh, as we can see from this screenshot, after you uh, clicking the menu, it will ask you to uh, add the, the, the key to the known host and then re, uh, request you to input your password. And after the password is correctly inputted, uh, the dual two-factor login will request you to send a push or enter the passcode. So after that, you will be uh, greeting into our system directly to your home directory. You can, in this case, you can use uh, the uh, traditional way to using our uh, uh, computational resources with command line. And then uh, let's talk about the uh, interactive section. The interactive section uh, is the highlight of our system that uh, we allow our users to use uh, the Jupyter Notebook, H2O AI, and TensorBoard in a very elegant and easy way. So we've been, uh, I'm not sure how many of uh, the you, how many of the current users uh, had during our previous uh, training sessions. Uh, for this year, since we have a newer version of uh, oper operating system, we did also have some update for this Jupyter, uh, uh, this Jupyter packages. Uh, other than just simply update the uh, version, we have uh, some, yeah, we made some change for the Jupyter users to have a more flexibility to switch between different uh, Python environments, which I will show you uh, uh, right away. Here, uh, right now, we uh, on the uh, hands-on section, we will re uh, like recommend our users to use the Jupyter Notebook on Red Hat 8. And uh, this is uh, capital, uh, the side, besides the new at the end, which means this is our new implementation. So inside this, our user only need to choose the partition CPU or GPU and uh, the number of hours of their job and uh, the name of reservation if they have any. And then is the number of uh, CPU uh, and number of GPU. After we uh, input, input all the uh, desirable uh, uh, variable, we can click launch and uh, they will bring us to this My Interactive Session um, page. Uh, in this page, we can see uh, if, you, uh, if the system has enough resources to hold your uh, job, it will, uh, it will only take like maybe a couple of seconds to one minute to run the job. So, uh, the job, once you're seeing the job is running, uh, there will be a button uh, shows uh, down here that when you click connect to Jupyter, you will be, uh, you, uh, there will be a new uh, page that bring you to the Jupyter Notebook sec section. And uh, we used to allow users to switch uh, different, their own uh, Python environments or different environments, but uh, each user, but each session can only have one uh, Python environment. So right now with this, up, uh, with the current update, we can see that uh, if we click the kernel uh, menu, we can change 
the kernel even within the within the single session. As we can see, this is my own uh, environment. I have uh, multiple environments has different names. That uh, so if I want to use uh, the OpenCE 1.2, I can just click this. Uh, then I will have every packages that within this environment. But let's say if I want to use some other environment for my own, I can just simply switch to a different kernel. And uh, this sim uh, very similar to uh, Jupyter Notebook is the Jupyter Lab. Uh, if we have the, the this have exactly the same uh, op, uh, input options. And uh, when we had uh, submit this job and uh, this job is up and running, we can click the connect to Jupyter button. You will bring us to the home page of the Jupyter lab. As we can see here, uh, each, uh, the each square tab is actually a option to choose uh, a different a different kernel. Uh, I mean, uh, in our, uh, I think every user right now will have a series of uh, kernels that is pre-built pre by us. Uh, uh, you, you, since you do not have your build your own uh, customized Python environment, you might not see that many kernel you can choose, but you definitely will see multiple kernels you can uh, switch between. And uh, also, uh, this is at the very beginning, you can choose one uh, kernel. And uh, within the job, uh, when you open the, uh, the notebook, you can also click the kernel and uh, select a di different kernel within the, uh, exact, uh, within the same job session. And then uh, let's talk about some very, I will say, uh, lightweighted and very in, uh, like uh, interesting uh, tools that uh, we provide for our user. It's called H2O AI. So H2O AI is a product uh, that uh, is, a, I think it's a British, a British AI driven company called H2O. Uh, this software is the, the target uh, the, is uh, targeting to uh, making the machine learning and uh, deep learning job uh, easy for every user. So uh, let's uh, let's see what this uh, uh, this software can provide. Uh, because right now uh, our system only support the community addition of the. Uh, uh, this software, which is free. So uh, we can only run this software uh, on CPU. The, the GPU is not supported at this time. So uh, we uh, reduce the option. Uh, the user only need to input how many hours they want with this software. After click launch, uh, if the job is up and running, uh, you can click connect to H2O AI. It will bring you to a H2O flow dashboard. You can see this, this dashboard is very like uh, MATLAB. So uh, which has a lot of examples. If uh, you can see here the view example flows, they provide some uh, uh, default uh, examples and uh, along with some introduction of a different uh, machine learning approach, it's very useful. And uh, if you wanna have a very fresh taste of uh, how this will work, this, uh, these example for, uh, examples is a very good start. And uh, last but not the least, is that uh, we will have the uh, tensor board for our users to visualize uh, their uh, machine learning uh, work, uh, workflow, uh, the intermediate result. Uh, since this is only CPU uh, needed, uh, we do not allow our users to choose different partitions. The only option is the uh, 
a log directory that is required for TensorBoard to gather, gather the data and the additional TensorBoard arguments. Uh, and uh, of course, also the number of uh, runtime hours. So after the lunch, there will be a tab within the interactive sessions. And uh, by clicking connect to the TensorBoard, uh, we will, uh, they will open a TensorBoard dashboard over here that you can see all the results been uh, read from the uh, log directory will be visualized uh, inside the page. All right, I have uh, pretty much uh, completed all the uh, uh, presentation part. The next is the hands-on demo time. Uh, in this section, I will show you how to use uh, your web browser to access our computational resources, as well as the traditional method to access a health system through a, a terminal and the command line. All right, first thing first, uh, let's get on to our how on demand web-based portal by simply type uh, H A L dash on demand dot NCSA dot Illinois dot edu. After we hit enter, the system will bring us to the uh, uh, authentication web page. Inside here, we want to input your net ID and the password. This. After I uh, input my password correctly, uh, I need to send a push to my cell phone. Then after that, I will be bring to the uh, uh, home page of our how on demand uh, wipe service. First is uh, we have some useful information on the top of the page. Uh, you can see here that uh, uh, for detailed user guide, uh, you can uh, search our wiki page that uh, showing here. And also you can email us uh, a ticket uh, for any question you have with the system. Uh, also, we would like to uh, recommend you to join our Slack space uh, because con contact us through Slack is the fast way to get our reply uh, to your questions. Uh, last thing but not the least, I would like to uh, 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 recommend all our users to use Firefox and Chrome web browser uh, because the Apple Safari web browser is known for some issues that we cannot simply fix. All right, so uh, let's start with the How On Demand dashboard. As uh, we can see on top of this, uh, we have uh, several main functionalities, files, jobs, clusters, interactive apps, uh, as well as my interactive sessions. Let's get started with the file. So after we click the, uh, the file, we will go to the home directory directly. Know that this is very looks like a uh, the file manager on a Linux system. We have all the functionalities that we will need uh, for uh, 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 for the uh, file operation. Like we can create new file, new folder, upload and download file, move and copy file and delete file. Uh, one thing more need to address is that uh, every user can only see the directory 
uh, that they are now uh, they allowed it to access. So if I go back to home right here, I cannot uh, enter other users' home directory. That's for safety concern. And uh, another thing worth mention is that uh, this web browser uh, actually has a embedded uh, editor. So if we click here with edit, uh, we will have a fully functional uh, text editor here. And uh, with this, uh, we can always uh, modify, modify the file and save it and uh, for further use. So this is a way that you can write your code on the machine, but just with your white browser. All right, that's pretty much it. The, all the function that this file uh, manager can uh, uh, can have. And second, let's uh, talk about the job functionality. First is the job monitor. Uh, if you click the active uh, jobs tab, it will bring you to a uh, page show all the all your jobs uh, that is currently running uh, killing or uh, just completed uh, in in this page so this is uh, the your job means this I only want to see my job on all the clusters remember right now we have the how and the HAL08, two clusters with different operating system. And if I click the all jobs, I can check all the queuing job and the running jobs across uh, the two clusters. And if I click this uh, arrow-shaped button, it will show me uh, the detailed information about this job. The cluster is submitted to the job ID and uh, the user who submitted, uh, which partition they are using, uh, what's the state of the job, why if, uh, if this, uh, uh, for the, uh, I take this as an ex example, the job here is pending, is killing. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, this user already hit maximum uh, node uh, per job limit, per limit, uh, per job limitation. So this, he asked for totally eight nodes, but uh, based on our policy, we only allow a uh, four. So user want to run uh, a oversized job can always contact us and uh, we can make a exception uh, for uh, for the user. All right, let's talk about the job composer. Job composer here allow you to uh, submit and uh, edit your job uh, with our uh, how system. So uh, let's start. Uh, with a template that uh, we prepared for our users. As we can see here that this job is uh, named TensorFlow Amnest. Uh, so it's uh, Amnest the hundred, uh, handwritten uh, digits recognition data set uh, using uh, TensorFlow work, uh, framework to, uh, to train. So we can choose which cluster we want to submit. We want to use the newer Red Hat 8 cluster over here. And then uh, we can see currently this template is located at this place. And uh, if you're familiar with Linux, you will know that this is a, uh, a, a uh, Paths that only the root and admin 
will have the uh, permission to write into. So after we click the create new job, the templates will create the job and uh, copy the files we want into a user's own directory right here. So inside here, we have uh, two files. One is a submission script. And the one is uh, the uh, TensorFlow uh, under scratch amnest Python file. We can uh, always click this and see uh, the code from the editor. And then let's, uh, if well, everything setting is correct, we can simply just submit it. Okay, job is submitted and is has been queued. Uh, so, all right, let's see. Uh, if we go back, we want to see the active jobs. And I only want to see my job over here. We can see the job is running over here and uh, the job ID is 1323. And uh, okay, as we can see, the job has completed very fast. Uh, since this uh, training code uh, contains not only the training part, but also the profiling part. So we will generate a lot of uh, uh, the uh, uh, intermediate result for uh, profiling information for uh, a further uh, visualization with TensorBoard. So uh, we shall able to see this from here. Uh, all right, so uh, let's show you how to run a interactive session with TensorBoard. The TensorBoard is a visualization tool that's uh, very popular among our machine learning uh, research region. So uh, for this, it's a very lightweight tool. So uh, user only need the CPU power, no GPU needed. So uh, all the users only need to uh, uh, input their uh, their profile directory. In our case, is uh, here, the so session ID 16 with a train that uh, is, this is here and uh, all the uh, profiling information is under the train folder. So we input here and then uh, run time, which is me one hour. And uh, so let's go. After click the uh, uh, launch the tensor board, uh, we will be in, bring to my interactive section. Uh, inside is my interactive session. Uh, we can uh, see the job is uh, killed and uh, turned into green so that this job is currently running. So we can see there's a button shows up set uh, connect to TensorBoard. So if we connect to TensorBoard, you can see our uh, profiling uh, data has been plotted that within this uh, within this page. All right, so that's the uh, uh, job composer active job along with the uh, TensorFlow TensorBoard. Now let's talk about how to use um, the Jupyter Lab and the Jupyter Notebook. So uh, first is, uh, let's talk about Jupyter Notebook. 
since we will update our system to Red Hat 8, so I will strongly recommend all our users to use uh, Red, uh, Red Hat 8, the newer implementation for our interactive apps. So there are several options for our user to input. First is, uh, do you want to use GPU or with your job or only CPU needed? Second is the number of hours. And uh, if you have a reservation name, you can simply input the reservation name here, following by the number of CPU and the number of GPU. Okay, let's just uh, start one job over here. So after I click start a job, uh, the job will be killed. And uh, normally, if uh, the uh, system have enough resources, your job gonna uh, start to run within several seconds to one minute. Now there is a button here shows uh, connect to Jupyter. We just click that. A new page will be opened that uh, uh, give give us a uh, Jupyter notebook uh, web page. All right. So if uh, we want to see uh, something, if we, we can open uh, a simple sample uh, Jupyter notebook file, you can simply do that. So <clears throat> inside here, we can. Uh, type some command to run. Let's see if I want to see the environment list and uh, where the Python, uh, where the Python uh, executable is located. Can always run this command. So you can see uh, there's a lot of uh, Python environments that I created. Uh, I will, uh, right now currently we are under the open CE a environment, but if we want to uh, switch to other environments, we can always click the kernel, change kernel. Let's say, okay, let me switch to this one, the WMLCE 1.7.0. So the kernel starting, please just wait. We just wait for a while for the kernel is ready. And then if we rerun this command, we can see that we already switched to this environment uh, along with the Python executable from the OpenCE folder uh, into this WMLCE folder. All right, this is uh, very flexible for our user to try out different uh, environment with uh, their code. So uh, let's talk about uh, the Jupyter Lab. And uh, <clears throat> before that, I want to mention one thing quite importantly that uh, uh, our user uh, do not need to worry about if they lost their uh, internet connection or uh their web browser section uh with within their computer like you wanna uh you want to go for a lunch so you close out your notebook and when you come back you can always get your previous section uh from my interactive session session like like doing here so because uh this web browser will hold every uh user session on our system, not on your uh, not a local desktop or laptop. So you can always get it back. And uh, uh, so if you request a very long time and you're not going to use it, uh, you probably want to uh, just delete, the, cancel the session and delete the session to save the resources for other users. All right, now let's try out the Jupyter Lab. 
Jupyter Lab is pretty much just like the Jupyter Notebook, but with uh, some uh, fancy functionalities. Let's start with GPU section partition with one hour of GP, uh, one hour of war time, well, along with 16 CPU cores and one GPU. Let's click launch. The job will be submitted to the queue and uh, we need to wait for a while. Okay, it's pretty fast today. And uh, we can click here, jump, connect to Jupyter. So we can have a Jupyter Lab page over here. All right, so if we uh, want to, uh, this is a similar uh, idea that uh, we can run the environment list to see, oh, right now we are under the WMLCE 1.7.0. Uh, what about if I wanna uh, try out something else? What if I wanna uh, try a kernel? We can always click the kernel tab and uh, change kernel back to 1.2, uh, OpenCE 1.2.0. Give it a second to adjust the new kernel and then start to run your code. You can see we already switched back to open the WMLCE. Uh, I have prepared uh, some uh, very uh, like a typical uh, example for our user. We can always run the job okay what's going on this one oh right now this module do not have this so i need to switch to another kernel right this one is not working so let's switch to let's say wmlce and then run the job this environment should have everything that required so it can run. So it's very simple. If uh, this environment doesn't have what you need, you just create another environment that has the required package and start it right away. So just give it a second. All right, so this is already passed. Everything has. Uh, it has all the uh, all the packages that we need, and uh, we can simply start the training section. And the training session starts. So very fast. Uh, since we're using the GPU, if you're using CPU only, you, you can expect it that your training speed is going to be slow. But sometimes if all the GPU resources get occupied by other users, uh, using CPU to get your job started is also a good idea. And uh, by the way, all right, so the final accuracy is 69%, uh, consider we only have a five epoch, it's not that bad, right? All right, so this is how you work with a uh, Jupyter Lab job. Let's leave this and queue the session and uh, free the resources for all the other users. And uh, uh, another uh, very interesting app that we provided on our health system is called H2O AI. Uh, due to the funding issue, we can only support the community edition, which is free, but only supports the CPU. The GPU is not supported for this uh, app at this moment. Uh, we only need to input the runtime uh, uh, hour in hours for this app, 
and uh, the system will uh, automatically assign 64 uh, CPU core for your job. All right, so just uh, wait for a second. All right, the job is running fast today and uh, uh, we can click this connect to H2O AI button. All right, so here is the H2O AI flow dashboard. We can see here is very Jupyter Lab or MATLAB alike the interface. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, uh, example flows that we can check from here. By clicking this link, you will be bring to a lot of uh, examples. And uh, uh, they have a very uh, detailed information about those samples. samples. So let's uh, click the distributed uh, random forest tutorial. So inside this session, it will give you some information. What's this method about? What's this data about? Basically, uh, this training workflow, including import the data, uh, parsing the data, and the build a model, and uh, format the output. So uh, this is very straightforward. So I will leave to our users to explore. Uh, we can uh, move to the uh, next uh, session that uh, is uh, command uh, command line and uh, uh, with shell access. So let's go to the cluster tab and uh, click the hell dash a shell access. He will enter a terminal for us. Uh, I want to address that uh, this terminal is hosted on uh, our system, health system. So you do not need to install any uh, terminal uh, applications on your local uh, laptop or desktop. So let's start it. Do you want to continue the connection? Yes. And uh, type in your pass, uh, password uh, word and uh, send out the push. All right, after you uh, uh, accept your own push, you will be bring into our uh, login node. As you can see, we have a welcome flag over here and uh, some introduction for our uh, Slurm wrapper suite that we discussed in the first session. And as well, some uh, information that we want to notify our users. So let's get started. Uh, while you bring bring into the login node, you will be bring to your own home folder uh, at once, and uh, uh, you can check what uh, what files do you have, and uh, uh, you can uh, also. Uh, uh, try to check out the cluster current usage using SWQ. So after you tap that, as we uh, uh, talk mentioned in the first session, uh, this will show you all the current available nodes and the usage level. You can see from the left hand side, uh, there, the, for most of the nodes over here has using less than 64 CPUs. So if you have some CPU only work, uh, you have enough resources to get it started right away. And uh, if you need the GPU, you can see that 
from this, how there are two, there are three, there are four, there has four GPU left it. Uh, so if you can't, your job is one or two GPU needed, your job also can start it very fast. So how to start a uh, interact, interactive section? Just like we mentioned before, just simply type SW run dash P GPUX1. And uh, you can see that uh, our Slurm wrapper suite not only uh, help you to type in the correct Slurm command, but we also output the original uh, uh, Slurm as run command with the correct configuration. So uh, this is equivalent to our SW run dash P GPUX1. So as you can see, after uh, you su successfully submitted your command, we will have a green color coded uh, notified uh, notification that right now you can see uh, I already been bring from how a login to the login node to how to to the compute node. Now, if we type the SWQ again, you can see my job been assigned to how 2 and I took the fourth GPU within this node. And now I can do my, my work. And uh, another thing is, since this is a terminal section, if I close this terminal session, uh, I mean, I cannot keep the section anymore, not like our interactive sections. So to solve that, you need to type in the Tmax. The Tmax will record your section to, uh, our, to our system. So right now, if I do swrun dash p gpu x1, I'll be bringing back to how there are two. If for some reason I lost my connection from here and uh, I need to get one, I get back to my shell. I'll be bring back to the login node, but if I do a Tmax attach, I'll be bring back to uh, the session where I left. All right. So we talk about the uh, SWQ. We talk about the SW run. Now let's talk. Let's talk about uh, the uh, uh, SW batch. So this is a very simple SW batch script. We have a job name over here, the so output uh, file and uh, which partition you want to submit it to and uh, also the S, uh, S batch uh, war time is 24 hours, but the command is very easy. We load the Python environment, but we only print out some uh, print the host name. So how we submit it? We just sw batch and demo swb. So now after we submit this job, uh, we will print out the original. Uh, script, batch script that you will submit. Well, we will also show you if you're using uh, original uh, Slurm uh, run script command, this is uh, what it should look, should look like. And these two are uh, identical. So this is pretty much everything uh, I want to show our users to use uh, our health system. 
and uh, uh, please uh, contact us if you have any other questions and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Yeah, the way. So thank you very much for this tutorial. So we will come back next Wednesday and next Wednesday, Wednesday our tutorial will be uh, on uh, using machine learning uh, uh, tools of Hall. So we will spend a bit more time focusing on specific uh, use of machine learning tools. So please take your time to uh, learn how to work with the system. Uh, next time we will use a Jupyter Notebook for this work. Yeah. And, uh... Yes, please uh, join our Slack channel and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I will answer them. Thank you.